We have some incredible news about the upcoming Google Pixel 5 and I'm going to be sharing the details right after this. If you're new here and want to stay up to date with the latest tech, please hit subscribe followed by the bell. You can also keep up on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter by clicking the links in the description. So the Google Pixel 5 launch is fast approaching and we have some incredible news to share with you guys today. Before we get into it, please like the video if you're looking forward to the Google Pixel 5 and let me know in the comments if you prefer the Pixel 5 or the Pixel 5 XL. As most of you already know though, its predecessor was the first to launch with a Soli radar chip with motion sense technology. This allowed users to accurately use hand gestures to change music tracks, answer calls, silence alarms and much more. While many were excited for this feature, as a Pixel user myself, it never really interested me and I can tell you that for me, it was actually pretty useless. The only thing it's even helped with slightly is the improved face unlock and I've actually had motion sense disabled it all times. This contributed to very poor sales on the predecessor and it wasn't helped by the fact that the radar chip used frequencies that were not permitted to be used in certain countries so this also limited their market. The good news however is that Google have learned from their mistakes and the Pixel 5 is not going to have this Soli radar chip. As a consumer it's just additional hardware that you end up paying for in the handset cost and never get any real world use out of it. It's a gimmick and it really does not help in day to day life. Of course there must be some people out there who did find it helpful so please let me know in the comments if that is the case. This is also more evidence though that Google are maybe not aiming for the high end market this time with the Google Pixel 5. They appear to be making moves to reduce costs of the device and personally I think it's the right move for them to do. We've got news that the Google Pixel 5 is also set to adopt the Snapdragon 765G instead of the Snapdragon 865 so it's really all starting to add up. While some people may be disappointed, you need to understand Google's market. Most people want the Pixel for its stock Android and incredible photography. It's not really a phone for gamers or editors, although the predecessor could be used as such. We've got the Pixel Neural Core chip for the computational photography, so if they cut costs and provide a mid-range phone with the same camera experience, then they're going to have a very competitive advantage. Even in their current track record, their downside has always been that they use the current gen flagship system on chip, but they're actually delivering it to us at a time just before the next gen socks are released, so this does put many people off. Now they're going with a more budget friendly system on chip and if they can get that cost low enough then they will have a much bigger market. We've already had plenty of leaks on the cameras of the Google Pixel 5 and the Pixel 5 XL and they're aiming to step things up a notch with their first triple camera setup. We haven't had too many details on the specific cameras being used which is a change for a Google release. We know one of them will be a wide angle camera. Of course with smartphone prices skyrocketing it's nice to see the Google Pixel 5 keeping things down. They're always priced a bit lower than the other flagships and with the latest prices this is no doubt going to be a much welcomed approach. When it comes to leaks surrounding the Google Pixel 5 though, we have to be careful as many of them are based on rumors instead of solid leaks. I always give sources in my videos but to be upfront with this one, there are very little sources giving info. If we start with the leak that we do have a source for though, it's the camera arrangement on the rear. We've had the cameras leaked from YouTuber John Prosser and I have to say it does look interesting. The render is of the Google Pixel 5 XL and he advises that they are from CAD renders of the real thing. Now it's a soft matte glass back with a glossy camera module containing three cameras. We saw an upgrade to two cameras in the predecessor so Google are pushing things further again with the three. Now it's important to note when it comes to Google phones there's supposedly always three prototypes created and then they pick one of these prototypes for the consumer model and continue working on that. So that does mean that there's a possibility that although this leak is 100% accurate it may not be the one that's going to make it to market. And while many people have said the design is growing on them, I have to say I'm a huge Pixel fan myself but even after a month of looking at this one I still just don't like it. He advises that the front of the Google Pixel 5 is also going to be similar to the predecessor but it's going to have a smaller forehead. This is great news as personally I thought the Pixel 4 was a huge improvement on the 3 so to 
keep it the same with a smaller forehead will look better. When it comes to the display, the predecessor had a 5.7 inch and a 6.3 display dependent on which version you picked. It's hard to guess at sizes because each year we do get a small increase but they can't go too big on the standard model because people appreciate the smaller phone. Personally, I'm going to estimate that the Google Pixel 5 is either going to be a 5.7 or 5.8 inch display and we'll be getting an increase on the XL to 6.5. It will of course have an OLED display and the Google Pixel 5 is expected to increase its refresh rate to a 120Hz display. The predecessor focused on face unlock and it didn't have any fingerprint biometrics which I believe was a mistake. I think Google may have also noticed this considering its return on the 4A so I would say that we can expect an in-display fingerprint scanner on the Google Pixel 5. When it comes to the resolution, the Pixel has always been sensible and they do seem to want to conserve battery life, so I think we'll get a full HD Plus resolution on the Pixel 5 and a Quad HD Plus on the Pixel 5 XL. When it comes to cameras, we're of course expecting a triple camera setup on the rear of the Pixel 5. While we don't know exactly what lens they're going to be using, reports are suggesting that one of them will be a wide-angle lens. Given that some companies are also introducing dual optical image stabilization now, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw this in the Pixel 5. They've always prided themselves on great photography and generally do a good job at competing with the competition. When it comes to hardware, there are loads of reports that the Google Pixel 5 is going to be powered by the Snapdragon 765G. When it comes to RAM and storage, Google are always pretty sensible so we can expect 64 and 128 storage but there are a few rumours that we may see 256. Google always encourage the use of Google Photos and to be fair, they do provide people with plenty of space to fill it up. RAM I think they'll either stick with 6GB or bump it up to 8. With so many manufacturers putting in unnecessary amounts of RAM, it's always great to see Google keep it sensible. Battery capacity is normally quite reserved as well, but the Pixels are very well optimised for battery. I would expect the standard Pixel 5 to be 3000mAh and the Pixel 5 XL to come with a 4000mAh battery. It will of course ship with the stock Android 11 that we all love in the Google Pixel and it will be IP68 water resistant. When it comes to price, I can't see them having too much movement here. They've never really used overly expensive technology and normally they do price below the other mainstream flagships. I'm going to estimate that the Google Pixel 5 is again going to start around $800 and the Pixel 5 XL to start from $900. The Pixel 5 is also expected to release in October this year as normal. For those who want to spend a bit less or can't wait until October, we also have the Pixel 4a expected to release in May. The Pixel 4a is a budget version of the Pixel 4 and offers everything we need in a cheaper package. When it comes to the display itself, we get a 5.81 inch OLED display with a resolution of 1080 by 2340. While we had many rumours of a 90Hz display on the Google Pixel 4a, it's been confirmed to run at 60Hz only. There's been no mention of the actual screen protection but it could well be the same dragon tail glass we saw in its predecessor. When it comes to the rear of the phone, we get the same square camera bump in the top left corner, but unlike its premium counterpart, the Pixel 4a only has a single camera along with an LED flash. The camera is however a 12 megapixel sensor capable of 4K video recording with image stabilization. Another noticeable difference that you will notice is that the Pixel 4a has a physical fingerprint scanner on the rear. While many may have wanted an in-display fingerprint scanner, I'm just happy that they've brought it back. My biggest complaint on the Pixel 4 is of course the lack of a fingerprint scanner and while the face unlock does work very well, I've always missed that fingerprint scanner. The Google Pixel 4a we have here is the black model so we've got a completely black back with a white power button on the side. When it comes to the specs, the Google Pixel 4a has been run through IDA64 giving us all the information we need and the specs are as follows. It's powered by the Snapdragon 730 system on chip. While not a flagship chipset, it's still a very capable 8 nanometer system on chip and we're seeing it in a lot of phones lately. The Pixel 4a comes with 6GB of RAM which is actually 2GB more than its predecessor and this model we have here has 64GB of internal storage. It's still unknown if there's also going to be a 128GB version but Google encourages users to use Google Photos in order to save space on the phone. 
The hands-on video also confirms that the Pixel 4a comes with dual SIM support which makes a nice change. The phone's powered by a 3080mAh battery and it of course comes shipped with Android 10. While many may think that 3080mAh is too small, it's actually an 80mAh increase on the predecessor and that was pretty reasonable for its battery life. The reviewer of the hands-on video has stated that the phone is available for purchase in Cuba for around $500, but the phone hasn't even been launched yet so it does seem very unlikely. This is more than likely just an early prototype or even a phone sent out by Google to be leaked. But as with all previous Pixel launches, we can be pretty certain that the leak is correct and this is in fact what the Google Pixel 4a is going to look like. The Pixel 4a was set to be announced in May 2020 at the Google I.O. event, but as with all major tech events at the moment, it's unfortunately been cancelled due to a recent outbreak. This could however mean that we get an earlier launch and Google normally send review units out before launch anyway. I have been given their previous releases, so I'm hoping to be able to get my hands on one of these to review for you guys as well. When it comes to the pricing, the Pixel 3a started around $400, so we can probably expect the Google Pixel 4a to be around $400 to $450, which isn't a bad price at all. Earlier leaks also suggested that we could be seeing a Pixel 4a XL, but leaks have been silent ever since. So that's it for today's video. As soon as we get some solid leaks on either the Google Pixel 5 or the Pixel 5 XL, of course, I'm going to be sharing them with you guys straight away. As always, though, I'd like to know your thoughts in the comments. Who out there is waiting for the Google Pixel 5 and are you waiting for the Pixel 5 or the 5 XL? But thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, smash the thumbs up. If you didn't, hit the thumbs down twice and I'll see you guys in the next one.